meeting to order. It is the it is eleven o'clock on the seventeenth of March. Um, there is one person that was excused, um, so present is John Kearns and myself for this, and Jim from the Tri Town Board of Health. Um, right. uh, review and approve the minutes from the sixteenth. John, do you have anything you might like to add to the minutes? No, or change? no, so move. Okay, seconded, all approved, moving on. Second thing on the agenda is the state sanitation code housing notice. So Jim, could you go sure. through that with us? Uh, so on March, those that aren't speaking, uh, hold on one second. So on March 7th, 2022, we were called by the Lenox Fire Department to 6 Walker Street, uh, Unit 314. Uh, tenant Sarah Sadelich Herman uh, was taken out by ambulance and you know there was there were some concerns about the sanitary conditions of the unit in, in particular um, there's a there was a lot of rotting food uh, the kitchen fridge wasn't accessible uh, the bedrooms weren't really accessible and so we we had to make sure that before the tenant goes back it's somewhat cleaned up and there's a lot of signs of pest <laughs> vermin from a lot of the rotting food. And, and I know there's some representatives here from the, the unit with the tenant and they can update us, but really what needs to happen is, you know, we're not looking for an immaculate apartment. It's just, if we can get some of the conditions kind of cleaned up, clean up the area in the kitchen where there's no fire hazards, get rid of the rotting food, and just have enough width in each of the rooms so the tenant can safely move move about. We're, we're willing to lift this um, temporary notice to vacate order quickly. And I, I communicated with the health system last week that if some of the unit would have been cleaned up last week, we probably wouldn't even need a hearing today. So I guess I'll just, you know, Madam Chair, if you want to allow those to speak on their behalf, we're more than happy to do that, but we, we got to get some of this cleaned up before this person can go back just for their own health and safety. So are you saying that nothing has been done since? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So, so we need to hear from them. I just unmuted me. Oh. Hi, so this is Barbara, the director of the housing authority. Well, can I just say one thing? Yes, Barb. There, there are people in there cleaning. They've been cleaning since yesterday and they're, oh. they're yeah, they've been. They should be done today. If not, oh, great. We'll finish up tomorrow. Okay. There, the tenant hired them herself. Okay. Oh, so you'll feel comfortable with that after they're done. You'll do an inspection. Let us know to make sure that it's up to snuff. Should I do it or should, Jim? Should you come no, out? No, we 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 do that. That's our okay. responsibility. So this, it, so okay. just if someone if we can schedule a time and I can have someone out there. Um, even, I can even do it later this afternoon, even if there's a little bit of work to be done tomorrow, I, I can do it on my way out today and just, you know, if everyone's agreeable to that, I can probably come out like two or three today, as, as long as we're moving towards the thing, I, I have no issues and believe me, I, we, we wanted this taken care of a while ago, you know, and we, we don't, we don't want to displace anybody, but we need to make sure that people are healthy and safe in their own environment. Sure. Yeah, so how about between two and three, like 2.30 today, would that work? That's fine, if everyone's agreeable to that. I know okay. there's representatives from, from Ms. Sadelich on the call as well. Yeah. Is, is so okay if, if I can just say something for a minute, this is um, Roberta Bauman. I'm one of the social workers at Berkshire Medical Center. And um, we're, Sarah's actually here with me on this call. So, um, and she's, okay with me just saying a few things um, and then you can certainly talk with her. But um, so the delay in fact lies in the fact that she's been hospitalized since the date of you know the EMS picking her up. Yeah. And as you can imagine, that makes it a challenge for her to make arrangements. So we have been diligently working on that and, and we're all very happy that you know things are moving in the right direction in terms of the cleaning. Um, so from our standpoint, um, so, so Barbara already said that, oh, Sarah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, from our standpoint, from the health system standpoint, we would just like to have some communication when the unit has been um, satisfactory, like inspected, 
and um, that she would be clear from a vacancy standpoint to return and then we can handle what that's going to mean exactly. But um, yeah, Sarah herself has made these arrangements privately. And we'll, so. we'll take care of that. As soon as I, when I get done today, I can probably get something to you early evening tonight. Thanks, Jim. You have my email, correct? I do, I, think you, I do. Thank yeah. you. So I have Sarah here, here as well. I don't know if anyone um, needs to talk with her directly, but um, if not, we're, we're fine with the plan as is. No, I'm happy with the plan. Jim or John? No, that's fine. No, we, we'll, work, we'll, we'll all work together to get Ms. Sandwich back in. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, you're welcome. Get healthy. Yes, I will. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. All Thank, right. you. Thank you. Nice meeting you, Sarah. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care, Bert. Okay. Bye, Diane. Bye. We're, we're going to leave. You just let my nickname out of the bag. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gosh. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> okay, we're going to we're going to um leave the meeting now. So, thanks everybody. Thank okay. You. Have a Thank good day. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. Um Okay. Next item on the agenda is okay. I just to do it. Southern Berkshire Public Health Collaborative Update. Yep. Yeah. Um, so as the board knows that, you know, we have this new shared service, Southern Berkshire Public Health Collaborative, 10 town uh, group uh, funded by the DPH to have a comprehensive public health nursing program. That's going remarkably well. We, uh, Diane's the Lennox rep on that board. We meet the second Friday of the month. Um, Amy and Jill are just uh, are mm -hmm. doing outstanding work. And now Jane Smith, our full-time coordinator that relieves some of the burden off me to do all the daily activities of helping coordinate. Um, one of the biggest things we got to move along is um, the intermunicipal agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, although Tritown is the host agency and we have our own separate uh, agreement for the Tritown district, we the state's asking that we craft this 10-town uh, intermunicipal agreement that just reflects the relationship of the 10 town collaborative. Uh, Lee is the host community, just like they are for Tritown. The selectmen approved that the other day, the town attorney scrubbed it, they're good to go. We now need to advance uh, the intermunicipal agreement to Lennox. Mm -hmm. um, I did email that to Chris Ketchin. He hasn't gotten back to me yet on the coordination on when that will be on the selectmen's agenda. But we should probably, Diane, maybe if you want to, you know, give them a call or something and say, hey, yeah. can you let us know when you advance this? Okay. It'd be helpful to know. So in case there's questions, I can attend that meeting in support okay. of that. And again, it's just, it's a standard agreement that um, needs to work its way through all the towns. And then once the Lennox selectmen sign off on it, we'll have the Board of Health sign off on it. Um, yep. and then and, and keep moving along to the, all the other towns. And so that's that. Um, another important um, piece of news is that we are finally approved as our own vaccine site provider, which was very uh, lengthy process, you know, trying to, and then we, we had to sort out all the, all that stuff with the state and then we had to get our own MPI number through Tritown Health, which is something we've never done before. Uh, you know, Dr. Kenny is the medical director, so we had to use some of his information. And we're just we're finalizing the reimbursement piece. There's a whole mm. we're, we're using the Commonwealth Medicine Group out of UMass, where what happens is when everyone registers for a vaccine. You know, all the insurance, whether it's Medicare, Mass Health, or private insurance goes into the system. They take 10% of our of the cut, so, mm. but they but they manage everything. So basically all we do is get a check for reimbursements, which is, you know, a, there's a delay on reimbursements, as those in private practice may know. Mm -hmm. But you know, looking at the reimbursement rates, you know, there's gonna be a heavy upfront cost of the initial purchase of vaccines we're probably looking at like 50 60 grand 
which wow. three quarters of, well, there's a combination of things going on, Dr. Kearns, like we can put in a request for the free state supplied vaccines, which is for like the kids and under and no uninsured. Um, so that's free vaccine. So you don't get reimbursed on the cost of vaccine, but you can get reimbursed on the administrative piece. But then there's this whole other level of uh, vaccines that we'll need for an inventory, you know, the high dose, um, you know, the regular dose, egg free, all those have to be done private purchased if you want to, you know, make sure you get everyone out vaccinated. The high dose, for example, is $50 per dose. Mm -hmm. And so we're initially, I think the, the team told me that they're going to look at 400 high doses that will be really focused on the senior centers. And then we'll be, we're going to get a bunch of doses for the schools and the teachers. And then we're going to get a whole supply for like the community at large. So we'll have the seniors at risk taken care of. We'll have the schools and the faculty taken care of. And then what we'll have to worry about is kind of like EMS, fire, municipal, and anyone else that wants to get accessibility mm. to the flu vaccine. Mm. So we're probably looking at a good chunk of money up front, but we'll get a good chunk of that back on the private mm -hmm. purchase vaccine plus the administration. You mm -hmm. don't really make money, but we'll have enough money in the coffers come neck the following season we won't have to put up all these upfront costs that we'll have the money to pay for the vaccines. It'll be a really sustainable program. And now we'll have full control where we have our clinics, you know, in our towns that meet the needs of the community rather than relying on other agencies that do this. Plus we're also qualified to do COVID shots if we want to do that. Yeah, and that's so, what I was going to ask if it was just for the flu or not. No, no, it's, it's, it's carte blanche. It's, it, you know, yeah. um, we, so we are approved for COVID boosters, mm -hmm. the whole nine. Uh, it, it's taken a little bit of time and that's a huge, that was a heavy lift, but again, but that's one piece of many things that we're doing in public health. The, the nurses are really focusing in on equity they're delivering N95 masks to senior centers and all these other places that can't afford N95 masks. And we're, we're as we wind down COVID, hopefully, we're going to enter this new realm that we've never done before with comprehensive public health nursing. Mm -hmm. And when I mean comprehensive public health nursing, it's not just a basic maven and one flu clinic a year. We're going to be tackling a variety of things homebound stuff, mental health, really focusing in on true public health needs of our community. So it's an exciting time. And, you know, we've been lucky to put the right staff in place. And we're, and we're there's a lot of really good things going on. Is that well, through I just, everybody's efforts. Is that through just Tritown or through the intermunicipality uh, thing, the 10 town? It's so, so the Southern Berkshire Collaborative is the 10 town consortium. Yeah. Tritown is the lead agency. Yeah. So, so like, so, but, so we pay the bills and we're responsible, okay. but the nurses and the shared staff, although they're Lee employees, they're, they're the entire collaborative's nurse team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of these smaller towns, um, they, they, they're, they're really understanding the true intention and, and the benefits of, sharing services right triton's been doing it forever we wrote the book on it and mm -hmm. so but some of these other towns they had they've never really rolled out comprehensive public health program and they didn't have the money didn't have the resources and that's one of the challenges why we got to this point right. because there's massachusetts is one of the only states in the entire nation that doesn't put in dollars to public health We've, wow. we've always been on our own. You know, we have to go to town meeting. We have to appropriate it. Well, some towns are not so lucky where they get the funding that like we get through Tritown because we do a lot. Um, but there's a lot of inequities. And I really think this is the beginning of many resources and opportunities coming down the pike. You know, they're, they're talking about significant more public health dollars going to be channeled through some of these shared services programs. So we're just getting started and mm -hmm. um, it's an exciting time. And, you know, hopefully we can advance this intermunicipal agreement so we can kind of just move on and do get rid of all the red tape stuff and just do mm -hmm. like actual 
work in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as this moves along, I'm hoping that we can get a lot of um, air in the room sometimes with Clarence or whatever, just to make people aware uh, of all the hard work and where this is gonna go, um, hopefully. Because I'm, I'm you know, just very impressed with the nurses and the board members and the willingness to do the amount of work that needs to happen behind the scenes that we're not even realizing to get this going. Um, so kudos to them, please thank them. Well, well. <clears throat> okay. Anything else on that subject? I no, I, I just wanted to see where we were sitting on the IMA because I yep. knew he was done and out. I will. Um, Tom's going to bring down something to Chris either later today or tomorrow. So I'll call Chris ahead of time and talk to him about a couple of things. That okay. Of them. Okay. Um, awesome. So Tri Town Health Department updates. Anything new in that area? So uh, you you asked to put the tobacco slash CBD on yeah. the agenda. Because um, a new place has opened up. Yeah, and, and I and we did commun we did communicate with so uh, it's a C you're talking about the CBD store. Yep. Yeah, so CBD is actually allowed under certain conditions under the law. So the one when it, when it comes to our local tobacco and, and even state regulations, you can't sell anything CBD flavored in vapes. Which is under which is covered under the state tobacco law and okay. the local law, which we did communicate that with them that they weren't allowed to sell okay. anything vape related that was a flavor, okay. and the, you know and, and also the Department of Agriculture um, doesn't allow um, edible CBD products, which I know in some towns it's not being enforced because uh, there's no staffing capacity in your CBD stuff kind of like all over the place. Mm. We are we are aware of the store and you know and it, it, but they can't sell anything vape flavored related um, okay. even if it, even if it doesn't have nicotine in it. And, and I know in the height of the pandemic we did at one point present a draft uh, update on our tobacco regulations. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping, you know, as things settle down a little bit, we can we can get back on track with that. It's uh, it hopefully in hold a hearing in May to, with an implementation date, maybe a few months out. You know, we do have pretty good comprehensive regulations, but they're quite outdated. And with the uh, the new state law uh, kind of folding in right before the pandemic, you know, there's new fine structures and there's uh, flavored other products that we've traditionally not covered. It's yeah. really kind of like a maintenance kind of housekeeping issue. The, the one thing that is uh, on the table and that'll be op open for debate at a certain period of time, we, we have a cap on our tobacco permits and it's, we have a specific number that we don't exceed in each town. Mm -hmm. We don't have a mechanism for like retiring those numbers to oh. kind of slowly go down. Oh. So for example, if we had 14 licenses in Lenox, two stores close, we have two available licenses open for whatever use. Some communities have opted to retire those permits if they're not captured within a certain period of time. Yeah. And so that is on the table for discussion and possible vote. But outside of that, it's really just a reflection of the current laws. So it's, it's, it's not a lot of controversy once we present those tobacco regulations. And again, I'm hoping May, no later than June, to present a public hearing in front of the Triton boards to, to pass that regulation. It's really oh, just cool. amazing. It's okay. really, it's just, it's been, it's just been so crazy with the pandemic and, yep. you know, and I think everyone's zoomed out a little bit with a lot of these yep. meetings. But we'll, we're going to try to catch our breath and, and get this taken care of before the okay. end of the year. It's just important. That's why I wanted to bring it up again and refresh yeah, all our memories. Um, update on 10 Crystal Street. So there's, and, there's, two, there's two enforcement things going on yep. here. So let me update mm -hmm. you on 10 Crystal Street. So this is a multi-unit in the Dale. Um, it came to our attention probably November, December 2021 three units 
in the middle of a foreclosure by the bank. Uh, oh. it, it initially started as a no heat issue. Yep. Um, we sort of got that taken care of temporarily. And then when we finally got access to two of the three units, they were in pretty rough shape. And it was a very complex housing situation. So we immediately engaged KP Law, which is our Lenox Town okay. Council, Jeff Blake in particular. Um, I've worked with Jeff before and some of the other Lenox issues. This was a very um, complicated case when there was a foreclosure, HSBC was the bank, we had active tenants with children, and it was just, it was a very mm -hmm. complex case. So we, I immediately engaged with KP Law to help us sort that out. You know, we've been to housing court a couple of times. And so uh, we had, so fast forward, um, the bank has stepped up. Um, two of the units are now vacated and there's one tenant left over that's still living there. We're not sure if the bank is going to strike a deal to have the tenant move on. If it's, if it's vac it's a, if it's fully vacated, we don't really need to do anything. So it'll be incumbent upon the bank or if they sell it, for example, and they turn it into three units again, all our documents and inspections are on record. What's wrong with the unit. Okay. Um, if the tenant does stay, we, we have a follow-up in housing court in the next couple of weeks, but a, a lot of work needs to be done on this building. And so um, for, uh, a lot of the code issues, you know, there, there was raw sewage in the second floor unit from the third floor. Um, there's one, uh, there's one uh, furnace with one gas meter serving three units. That's, that's a big issue. Um, most of the windows are rotted out, um, no trash service. So right now, if you drive by, there's a lot of stuff on the outside, but we're already working with the bank to make okay. sure that that's cleaned up. And it, it's taken a lot of resources to kind of get where that is, but, um, that's the update there. So as an aside, it may not be appropriate. I, I'm not sure. Uh, you and I talked to Katie Vaughn at several points. Is this something for them to think about um, looking into for the bank through the bank? Yeah, so so the bank owns it, and I yeah. think so. Some of the communication, great question. So, some of the communication that our town council has had with the bank's town council, which is a rep, which is a group out of Worcester, when the bank finalized the foreclosure, they supposedly didn't realize that there were tenants living there. And most banks, when they when they initiate foreclosure, they typically don't want to become landlords. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, so what I think what I would encourage Katie in their group, if this bank is successful in negotiating the terms of an agreement to you know have this other tenant leave, yep. usually like cash for keys, for example, yep. like we're gonna give you some money, move on. While I don't know this to be true most likely the bank will probably put it back up on the market. Okay. I don't, I don't think the bank, and I don't know this to be certain, I, I, I don't know if the bank's going to drop 60, 70 K into rehabbing this mm. three unit apartment, then re-rent mm. it. My, my gut instinct would be they would, they would probably put it back on the market. And I think that would, I would have Katie and her group keep an eye on that property. Okay. But What's absolutely, the bank? what's the bank again? H HSBC Bank. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and so that would that would be, I think, a great opportunity. It's three units. Okay. Um, right now, it's two doors down from the market, in the in right in the heart of the Dale. Yep. So, I would I would keep an eye on that property. Okay. Um, but, the, but the bank does own it, and it's not okay. a. It's, 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 it, this is not. This is not a receivership case because it's just about yeah. empty. And, yeah. But I, I would, I would probably think that the bank is most likely going to put this back on the market. All right, thank you. Does Katie represent the bank? No, no, she's on the Affordable Housing Trust. Oh, okay. Um, okay. and um, and uh, her and I and 
Jim and her um, have been um, for a couple of years trying to work on little different things to make properties available. Okay. Yeah, and we've 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 done a couple receiverships already mm. in, in Lennoxdale. We, uh, well, actually, we did two in Lennox. That I recall. One on Upper East Street. Didn't you do one on Upper East Street? Upper Upper East Street, yeah. and then we did one actually right around the corner. Um, Hutchison. Uh, no, no, still on still on Walker Street, Lower Walker, right around the corner for request. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. There was that double yep. unit, which yep. um, yeah. Oh. Yes. So and I. I don't know where the AG's office is right now on the receivership program. I think, you know, I think as we, as we come out of the pandemic and COVID, I think we're going to start to see some of these programs kind of get back up and running. Mm. Um, but one of the, one of the challenges in, with the receivership program is the, 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 the housing court and the AG's office hasn't really identified a lot of local groups that are qualified to be a receiver. Yep. And I would encourage Katie Vaughn and her group, if they're interested in becoming a receiver through that organization, mm -hmm. they, they should reach out to the AG's office. I think she has. And, and what typically happens is housing court will usually have a list of receivers or yep. it doesn't need to be a bank. It doesn't need to be an attorney, but you know, you, you got to just all the stuff that you got to do as part of the receivership and you got to have some type of capital you got to have access to a contractor, you know, funding yeah. and, you know, and that kind of stuff. But like, if they could, I, I think it's a real benefit to the town of Lennox if they pursue that, if they, okay. if they're willing to, because when we come across these properties and if they're a designated approved receiver in housing court, it makes our process a lot easier rather than going east of Springfield looking for yeah. a contractor that doesn't even know the Berkshires that yeah. our one receiver that did those two properties those Whitman properties I just randomly came across this guy by accident um who, who did a really really great job as our receiver in in our two Lennox properties and he's always I'm always I'm still in touch with the guy but like we don't have anyone else in Berkshire County that shows a willingness to do this kind of work. Yeah, that's maybe maybe coming out of the pandemic and the housing market the way it is now, that could mm -hmm. change. But I would definitely have them check that out because okay. you know if they're if they're a, a potential receiver, and as soon as we identify a like an abandoned house, I can get a hold of her directly and say, hey, take a look at this property. Okay, I think that's the missing piece after all this time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, second piece is 167 Hubbard Street. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple things going on with this property. So we had initially um, received a complaint there over the winter that there was, um, it was an anonymous complaint asking about the clean fill rubble on the property. Mm -hmm. And then this anonymous complainant actually inquired about the septic system <laughs> on this property. So after investigation, the owner, so, so it was a failed septic system before we did perk tests on this property. SK design designed the new septic system, submitted the plans last June. We never approved it and an installer illegally installed it. Yep. Um, uh, Robert O'Brien. So he, so there's a couple things going on there. So uh, because of that, um, he was fined as a contractor. Um, he hasn't followed through with his fine yet for illegally installing a septic system without permits. The owner was notified that it was done illegally and that we can't issue a compliance certificate. We have to go back out, open it up, make sure everything was done legally. There's all this other stuff that's got to go on. So the, so the owner does know that. And then the third leg of that is there was some rubble, you know, not trash or anything per se, but like bricks and some stuff. The owner, we are in communication with the owner. He is cleaning it. The ground's still a little bit frozen. So we're, we're dealing with that. But I, the bigger issue here is the septic and we need to sort that one out. Because I think if I if I know that property, the backyard is wet in the back, and I think Sawmill Brook goes part of it goes through it. So I'm sure the uh, neighbors were very upset with what was going on. 
All right. Okay. The last one is harm reduction. And um, I, do, I became curious when we sat at the board meeting uh, a week ago last Friday <clears throat> that I don't know enough about it or I just don't know enough about it. Um, are they, are they, is she looking to put something in all 10 towns? Is this a permanent thing she wants? Is it a temporary where they pull up one day and- It's temporary. I, so what I know, and what I can do is I can send both of you. So they, they if you recall, they did present in front of the Tritown boards with a bunch of slides. Yep. I'll, I'll resend that to both okay. of you to kind of refresh our memory. But, it, but what, what I, the sense that I got is we, in order for this harm reduction services program and possible van to happen in these towns, we need to, we need to sign up as a board of health. Okay. Um, I, I know BHS has this harm reduction van and they're still trying to sort things out, but I'm thinking services are going to happen in the near future. And I did email Sarah DeJesus, yep. included you and asked for an update. It's not like they're still sorting out a few things here and there, but yeah, it's, you know, like for example, one, one day they'll show up to Lee with this van, they'll collect sharps, offer resources on harm, you know, harm substance abuse. So really starting to remotely try to provide services versus the brick and mortar that people can't get access to. So will, will that collection of sharps be for everybody? So say type one diabetics? Um, Cause that seems to be a, that's a larger issue. When we were doing the medication roundups um, and I know that the uh, tobacco um, guys would come and pick up all of our medicines. They didn't want to touch the sharps. That was right. You know, right. It's, there's a whole, I used to actually, this is, I'm sure this is something I shouldn't have done, but did I put them in the back of my car and I drove them up to 610 to get rid yeah. of them because I knew one of them was a neighbor that has diabetes and didn't know where to go or have the means to do it. So there's yeah. still that bigger issue for us to talk about because yeah. outside of 610, where do these people get rid of their sharps except to collect them in their garage? Yeah, they throw them in their garbage. But I, I think, you know, I don't want to mince words on, you know, on the harm reduction program in its total in, in entirety. I'm still learning myself, okay. but, I, but I think, you know, you have Jane Smith's email, who's our shared services coordinator, and you do have Sarah's email. Yeah. I, I think maybe emailing Sarah and maybe asking those okay. questions, I think would probably be the best way to do it. I, I don't want to say something that I'm, I'm off base on, That's okay. but I, but I would hope, I would hope that would be the case. Yeah. Yeah. I was just everything. curious. Um, and I thought, I, I don't know how, um, because she said she's been reaching out to different owners to see if she could put uh, borrow some space, yeah. and she has not heard back from anybody. So I don't think any owner in town is very enthusiastic about this, or it hasn't been explained enough. And then I I just sat and thought, do we ask to have them stop behind Berkshire Bank, which is a public parking lot for Lennox? Is that you know, where does it go with that? Just a lot of questions. Yeah, I, I think, I, and I think they're still trying to get the towns to sign off. And then I think they're going okay. to carve out the program. Um, I, I think it's relatively new. And I think there's things that they still need to sort out, but we should, you know, any questions like that, we should definitely let them know, to, you know okay. throw it into the queue and stuff. So I think that's about it. Uh, John, you have anything to add? No, I don't, Diane. I don't think there's anybody from the public left, is there? I don't see I don't, anyone. I don't see anybody. So I, I guess we can adjourn. Um, okay. Sound good? Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Have a good St. Patty's Day. Oh, yeah, you too. Don't drink.